Guys, welcome to another episode where me and Steven invite guests to talk about architecture and its many fields. Uh, last, uh, the day before yesterday, we had David Brazil over Show It Better's channel, Steven's channel, and we talked about sketching there. And today we're bringing Milo to talk about BIM, Milo from Balkan Architect and BIM and all about BIM. I mean, I know that there are many things to talk there, so we're going to try to to answer all of your questions. And I'm really excited for this, Steven. What do you say? Like we were doing this as a regular thing, right? Yeah, this is this is becoming a, like a, a show, in the, in the architecture talk show. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but it's really exciting, and we're really excited to have Milos here today, uh, Balkan architect, as many of you know him, because he is a master for all of us. I think he's a master, master, master in, in BIM and Revit, like in all of these things. And also I we would admire so much his work ethic. So we're going to talk about BIM, but we're also going to talk about, um, you know, what he does as a job, where he's at, um, you know, just get to know him a little bit more so you guys can get to know the person behind all of these amazing, amazing videos. Yeah, we're probably going to stick to, to Revit because that's his main uh, proficiency. But obviously, we're going to touch upon the, the subject of Revit versus other software and BIM as a general, and then BIM, uh, BIM specialist as a job role and everything on that. So let's welcome uh, Milo, Balkan Architect. Thank you for being here. Yeah, th thank, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Milos Demerinsky, and I'm probably more known as the Balkan Architect. Uh, online, I specialize in making Revit tutorials, uh, and yeah, that, that that's what I do. I'm very honored to be considered one of the architects worthy to come to the architecture show with <laughs> Oliver and Stephen. And yeah, we can we can talk about BIM, Revit, and anything else that you might want to ask. Uh, we're going to have like questions from the from the comments, and yeah, yeah, we're gonna gonna go into some controversial themes here. Uh -oh. okay. I hope you you're ready for that, and and guys, so drop in drop in the comments uh, your questions throughout the video. We're gonna try to answer them at the end. I've got some means they've already separated a few for 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 Milo, and all right. So should we should we explain BIM first before getting into this? I I know that most people already know, right? Maybe in a yeah, few well, words. Yeah, well, m m most people have kind of the basic idea, but in general, I, I would say that BIM or building information modeling is uh, just when you have a, a 3D model of any architecture or anything else, uh, you're basically adding information into that model. So that's why we call it building information modeling. We're just including all of the necessary data inside of our uh, models. So they not only look nice as kind of fun 3D models, but they also carry all of the necessary data, which is going to be important later on for uh, for construction. And, and I, I'm curious, Milos, with, like, in what point did you learn all of this? Was this in university? Was this after university, like in a specific architectural office that you were like uh, forced to learn so much about Revit? Or where did you become like such a master in all of this? Yeah, yeah well, uh, the, uh, I first heard about Revit from my uh, high school uh, professor. Uh, we had, uh, I, I went to a high school that specializes in architecture and construction. Uh, and uh, there uh, we had like a CAD professor and, and, and she told me that uh, there's this whole new program which is uh, better than AutoCAD, which calculates like the amounts of uh, material you need for the building. And I thought that was really cool. And then I completely forgot about it for like two years. And when I joined the university, uh, I, I was really passionate about learning uh, software and and 3D because well, that's what everybody told me that I needed to get a, to get a job after college, so or after architecture school. And so then I started first with 3ds Max, and that was my kind of my my, my entry in the 3D modeling sphere, but. Then, uh, as soon as I found out about Revit and what it can do, I concentrated on Revit. Then it took me probably two years before my first like YouTube upload, <laughs> and then it took me another probably two years before I got proficient enough where I can kind of call myself uh, at least a semi-professional <laughs> or something like that in the sphere of uh, BIM and Revit. Yeah, for us, that... for us, you're a master. Just yeah, you've covered pretty much everything there, like from the really advanced <laughs> stuff. And I know that 
Uh, we all seek information and education online. I think that's where we all started, right? And for those of the people listening here, I guess they all go to your channel and, and some others, but mainly yours to learn about, about, about BIM. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that, that you're sharing everything and you're kind of uh, teaching the world uh, where sometimes university doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, the first few videos on my channel were basically me figuring something out, and I didn't see uh, so, something like that online, or I didn't see it in a format with, which was interesting for me to to go over it. I mean, forums are like a really good uh, place to learn a lot of stuff, but it's also quite difficult to find what you're looking for on a uh, when you have to browse through endless conversations. And I, I just always was passionate about YouTube, and, and it, it was really fun for me. So it was kind of a, a natural thing for me to try to sync up these two kind of passions about YouTube and also learning Revit. And I would just, when I would figure something out, I would share it uh, online. And then later on, as the channel grew, uh, I, I developed more of a passion for teaching and just to find a, a good way to present uh, topics and and uh, present uh, solutions to certain problems uh, in a, the most interesting and fun way. Because nobody wants to you know, spend too much yeah. time searching for something and they want to get to uh, the solution as quickly as possible and to make it all as fun as possible. Yeah, I, I've noticed that is a, a characteristic of yours. Like, Because one thing is knowing how to educate through YouTube, but you've just uh, like kind of did, like discovered a specific niche on where you know that you are going to specifically like to the grain, like to to the specific uh, subject that people want to know about. And actually, I don't know, like your your voice also is kind of enthusiastic. It's kind of interesting. You have like a whole character, so it, it's it's a very cool that you're like this online teacher that we all know and, and that you obviously like teaching. You love teaching, so you know all of this is super interesting. And I think it would be interesting as well to know more on the bim side like do you think for like for architects for architecture students that are, that are you know graduating right now do you think uh you know bim is something necessary that everyone needs to know at the beginning of their career like eventually you know perhaps like they're, they're gonna they're gonna apply it in in the future but are, are, is it something that everyone needs to know everyone needs to learn and if and if they do like in what point would you recommend they learn it? Is is it something that you, if you you would recommend in the university to learn, or like throughout the development of your of your career? Yeah, that, that, that's a really good question. I think it's uh, important for uh, for people first to understand that BIM it, it does sound like this big thing, uh, and it can be defined in many different ways, and people do define it in different ways depending on what they're trying to trying to do. So I would say for university students and for students that are just learning architecture, uh, you don't have to concentrate on the building information modeling side or the information side of BIM, but you can still use tools like Revit or ArchiCAD or, or something like that uh, to get you started and to start modeling. Uh, it, it's something that they do try to do on my channel where I, I do these student projects that don't really include much information, but they are kind of cool buildings that you would do as student projects because I it, think it, it, it's important to start working in a software where you can transition into BIM easily. So that's that's my main kind of idea for that. So start off in school just learning one of these uh, softwares where you can easily transition into, uh, into BIM like Rabbit. And you don't have to use it for BIM. It doesn't have to be uh, BIM while you're at school. It doesn't have to include all of the data in school. And then later on, as you get your you know, first, second job, uh, you're definitely going to use some of the features. For example, if you learn Revit, uh, most people that I know that are working in Revit, the most information they pull out of the model is going to be like room areas and things like that, just calculating the, the, the areas. It may be like number of doors and windows and that's that's pretty much it. So that's where the bin stops and it's, and it's just a nice looking 3D model. And I think that's okay. If you're just getting started, I think it's okay to start with that. And then later on, uh, depending on uh, which direction you want to go in and uh, which types of jobs you want to work on, you're going to be implementing more information side of uh, of BIM. 
uh, I think people pro probably know that on small projects, uh, BIM isn't really utilized pretty much anywhere. I, I'm sure it's, there are some projects, but when you have like a small house, single family home, you're generally not going to see full BIM implementation because it's something that's really done on the ground and workers know already what to do and it's not that necessary and the calculations are not going to kind of set you off. If you calculate 5% extra material for something, it's not going to be like a terrible loss. But if you're going to be working on extremely large projects, big buildings, big projects, yeah, that, that's where you see more and more BIM as kind of uh, as the stakes grow, that's that's when you see more BIM uh, implementation. So if that's a direction where you want to go, then yeah, start learning uh, as much as possible on the information side of things. Yeah, I understand you completely. That's why yeah. that's why I wanted to sort of make this as the main theme for this conversation. Like, should every architect use BIM at all stages at all times? Because uh, we we may we may be convinced that the BIM will solve you solve all of your problems, but then if you just use Revit for for getting the rooms uh, metrics for uh, spaces and volume whatever, uh, that doesn't really pay off if you if you're taking so much longer to to do all of the yeah. drawings constructions right. And I, I've noticed this when working uh, here in Brazil, we we do our, our uh, working force like the the workers in the in the site they they already know so much about the the construction methods that it doesn't it doesn't uh, it shouldn't come from me like saying how they should lay the brick or, or how they should put the mortar whatever and 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 if do, uh, t drawing those informations and modeling those information is just a waste of time because they're not going to do as I'm I'm saying they have their own way, own way to do it yeah so perfectly said milo yeah there, there's a lot of that uh... Sorry, Steve. No, no, continue, 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 please. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of that in in the industry where you you might be tempted to over model and uh, over deliver, and at the end of the day, it's usually going to be the the contractor that does a certain part of the job. They have their own methods, they have their own approach, and they don't really care for <laughs> what you've designed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know, for example, I was just doing some. Uh, bathroom renovating and I just planned out where the pipes should go and how I want it all to connect and then the, like the, the plumber came in and just where do you want the, the sink to be and he doesn't care about anything else that I, yeah. uh, I worked on and he doesn't want to see the plans uh, or the drawings in it. Yeah, so uh, a, a lot of that I think people can get um, kind of over enthusiastic when it comes to BIM. Yes, I think it is the future, especially on large projects. But every like every single detail doesn't have to go through the building information modeling process. Uh, I think it's just not necessary, especially on on smaller projects. And, and now that like the, that BIM is specializing so much, uh, the architect in itself is also specializing. So you know, inside of an architectural office that usually does big projects, uh, usually there is a BIM specialist. There's a BIM manager. You know, there there are these all these uh different uh, specialized fields that maybe we don't know about. And, and if you're just entering as an intern, then maybe it's not your main role to know to know BIM. Maybe you, you, will, you will learn it or maybe you can even do a master's in BIM and been, been, been uh, you know, uh, managing or whatever. But I think this is something that you will learn over time and depending also on the field that you want to specialize on, right? So if you want to stay maybe in small houses, I don't know, in a, in a rural place, but that doesn't require so much coordination, so much uh, specification, and then maybe this, this is not useful. But for, for many for many offices, uh, they, they already have like their whole BIM structure planned out, which is something that I, I think is super interesting. And I think uh, uh, people, like uh, other architects, just want to become specialized in BIM modeling. Like what, what would you say to, to those architects that want to become that? Like how would they... Uh, proceed to develop their, their career? Like, should they do a master's in it? Should they do a course? Should they, you know, learn through YouTube and then uh, try to, you know, figure the figure it out? Like, what, what would you recommend? Well, well, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting uh, question. I, I originally wanted to be like a bin manager. Uh, that was my idea. And I was even thinking about applying to a master's degree for BIM. Uh, and because I'm from Serbia, we don't have that degree here. So, I was actually learning German and I wanted to move to uh, Munich to, to study that. And then more research that I did and more that I learned is that these degrees uh, 
won't really teach you everything that you need to know. And also it's a really new industry and it's changing all the time. And uh, also different companies have their own different approaches. So my general advice for people would be to try to get some sort of an internship or, uh, or something like that where they actually see in a company how that works because it's going to be tremendously different from anything that you either see online or that you, uh, that, that you can learn in school. But obviously I cannot speak for any program. I'm, I'm guessing there are some really good BIM master's degrees or something like that. So I guess do your research when it comes to that, but uh, probably the, it's, it's the experience that's going to kind of teach you the most. And it, I, I think at least in my case, uh, when I was researching about being like a BIM uh, manager, it's not as fun as people kind of imagine it to be. It's like, uh, I, I was always seeing it as like a, you're a half programmer, half architect, half uh, a structural engineer, and you're just, uh, you know everything and you kind of bring it all together. But uh, more that they learned about the, the, the job, it's usually fixing people's errors and uh, kind of figuring out uh, their different things. So. It, it, it wasn't really something for me. Uh, and if you're interested in architecture, uh, I think BIM management isn't going to be a uh, specifically interesting field, uh, which is probably not something you want to hear from the YouTube Revit guy. But yeah, uh, that's, that's just my opinion and what they've learned uh, over time. And yeah, that, that's, that's why I'm not a BIM manager currently. Yeah, but if people want to learn, I guess then the, the quick answer would be try to find a company that does that and then try to kind of learn from them. Pretty cool. That that seems like a, a suitable path to follow. But I agree with you. Like at first when I, I first discovered BIM, like I wanted to dive into this this world and, and dominate it and maybe be a BIM specialist. But the more I knew it, the more uh, t uh, I saw the technical sides of it. Because I'm I'm a very creative guy, I'm a very visual guy, so it was it wasn't the path for me at least. But I know yeah. that it's an important role, and then big firms, big offices, they they need that type of of job, right? The type of employee. All right, um, Milo, we like I know that from um, I wanted to know like why Revit? Like I know that Revit is the most used worldwide, and it's probably uh, more even in Europe, right? Uh, or at, at your, yeah. in your country, but I've seen some some migration for, uh, for Archicad, and I'm not gonna like in point my point of view right now. I'm, I want to hear from you. So why Revit? Uh, why do you think it's better than other BIM software or or not? And I want to hear from you. Yeah, right? yeah, it's it's a, it's a common question that they get, and I actually have one of the the the, the video uh, one a video where I kind of compare our Archicad and, and Revit, but. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that Revit is the, the better option between the two. I think it, you, you cannot have like one general answer that fits everybody. It's just like anything else, uh, just like choosing do you want to be an architect or a BIM manager. Uh, it's the same, same thing with Archicad or Revit. Uh, I, I started off with Revit. I like the, that it fits into kind of the Autodesk product line and uh, I, I like the features. Uh, but also, I, I won't tell anybody that it's it's completely uh, worthless to learn Archicad uh, in comparison to Revit. I think it, it, it probably has most to do with uh, what jobs are offered in your area. And if everybody in your area is working in Archicad, by all means, go with Archicad. And the same thing goes uh, with Revit. Uh, at first, I didn't really know about Archicad. I, I've heard about it, but I've never seen it kind of <laughs> uh, being utilized. And I, I, I never went like I never completely learned uh, Archicad, so I can say that yeah, uh, I can give you a good comparison between those two. So it's it's pretty much if I could give advice, is just see what everybody else around you is using and go with that because that's going to give you most odds uh, of, of landing a good job and and being able to use that software in, in real life. Yeah, in, in my personal experience, I 
when I when I was uh, studying architecture, I was working part time, and the office that I was working in was uh, working with Archicad, and I was learning Archicad in, in university. But then eventually, when I graduated, I had two or three offices that were only Revit, and it was like Revit uh, for urbanistic offices. So we need to learn we need to learn like very specific things, and from that point on, I was just in love with Revit. I never went back to Archicad, but I think it's just a point of preference. I mean, I, I don't I don't see any yeah. like big differences it depends mostly on the on, like on your peers on your your context and um but yeah i mean <laughs> my question is like for example um uh, a lot i know that maybe you don't have any limitations with revit you can create basically anything like for you but for for many of us like the the normal like the mortal people it, it's, it's very hard to, to to do some things in revit so would you say that uh, revit or BIM uh, software limits your 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 design or not? I know that maybe this is like a very uh, and a, like a premature question, but maybe a lot of students are seeing this yeah. and they're they're like, no, I can do some better things in Rhino or in SketchUp or just sketching it out that I can't seem to do in Revit or or in ArchiCAD or in any BIM software. So, what would you like? How do you see that 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 uh, argument? Yeah, uh, well, there are definitely limitations, uh, especially if you compare it to Rhino or something like that when it comes to creating those uh, wild structures. There's definitely going to be some limitations. And uh, I, I would say that uh, if you want to go in that direction, if you want to um, create some crazy, like Zaha had it, Frank Gehry style, uh, buildings, you're probably going to be better off learning something like Rhino, but that doesn't mean that the, the projects should stop there. Yeah, you can generate the form, but still the kind of the building information modeling side of Revit is going to give you what you require to finish that project. So we, we do see a lot of um, uh, a lot of kind of taking a model from uh, Rhino and then bringing it into Revit just to get the shape from Rhino and then to complete the, 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 the building Revit just for the, the rest of the project. So I think it's really important to kind of pick your softwares. Uh, you're obviously not going to be able to complete everything in, in Revit, but also a lot of things that people don't see as something that you can do in Revit uh, can be done. And that's why, that's why I make so many tutorials. Uh, for example, I was talking to one of uh, professors on, in my university when I was a student, and uh, I was showing them a, a model in, in Revit and how I was really proud of it. And they were like, yeah, I tried learning Revit, but at the end of the day, you have to do your details and uh, everything else in AutoCAD, so it's worthless. <laughs> I was like, no, well, you, you can do everything in Revit. So uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of this uh, kind of these comments where people don't believe that Revit is kind of a software that can get you to uh, the final project. Uh, a lot of that is just people not knowing uh, the capabilities. But on the other hand, uh, when it comes to those wild uh, designs and things like that, Rev definitely has some limitations. I, I've spent so much time learning the mass environment and I even developed a course on that topic, but still it's it's definitely not something where you can have no limitations. It's, it's very limited, but you have to kind of either work around it in Revit or use different software and then import that into into Revit. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Well, we've got two Revit guys here, Steven mm -hmm. and Balkan. Luckily for the audience, I guess, uh, I'm, I'm an Archicad guy. And one, one thing that I want to input into this conversation is that I've, the first time I, I got in touch with BIM was through Revit. Uh, and I did a course on it, uh, like a uh, in-presence course. And I, I kind of, I didn't like it, but uh, what I took out of it was the BIM methodology. I guess, I guess if you're learning a software, uh, it can be any BIM software. The, mo the most important thing is to learn how to work in a BIM software. So then you can easily migrate to, to for example, I started at Revit and then I didn't like it uh, for, for many reasons, but it doesn't really come here. But then I saw Archicad as an alternative and I, I kind of like it. And once I jumped into it, it was really it was much easier to to get the hang of the program once I had the basics of Revit sorted out. So because it's really different to go from a two D straight into a BIM software, like from yeah. out, from AutoCAD to ArchiCAD, uh, you, you just you don't know how things work. You, you're completely lost. But then if you go 
uh, into Revit and you don't like it, but then you go into Vectorworks, which is another option, uh, and you kind of didn't like either. Uh, and you can based that you can choose, right? Not, not, uh, not, we were saying about choosing the one that is most used in your location, but saying that, saying that you can choose, well, you can migrate and learn potentially the BIM methodology and use all of them, I guess, not, not in an expert level, but at least knows the, know the basics to get, get you started. Mm -hmm. did, did you uh, did you find uh, well, or I guess uh, 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 like to know what what features or what attracted you to ArchiCAD and what did you see in ArchiCAD there that wasn't there in Revit that uh, got you to to that uh, kind of, uh, opinion where you found it well, much easier to work with? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, of course. Like first of all, like I was never an AutoCAD guy. Uh, I went straight into Vectorworks 2D because it was like 2D, not even the BIM part of it, because it was uh, the software that the firm, the basically the the main firm that I internship at was using. So I got really good at it. So I had the the Vectorworks 2D, which is very similar to Illustrator in some ways, and it doesn't have that line drawing uh, AutoCAD command type of thing. So when I got into Revit, uh, although it's not the same thing, it, it brings some of the AutoCAD uh, thinking yeah, to, to the comments, right? And I, I never got used to it. And and I'm also an, a SketchUp guy, so so ArchiCAD for me relates very closely to how SketchUp works in terms of modeling, and it's very easy. It's much more intuitive to me, and I see that Revit is more dominant worldwide, as I said. But at least here in Brazil, I gotta say that a lot of firms are migrating, and and I'm I'm happy to see that because I like it better. But as you said, it's it's. It's a matter of preferences and location and how you get used to it. And and Stephen, right? We were talking with Oliver Thomas that time, and they they connect a lot of things to Revit, right? So yeah, yeah it, Oliver Thomas was a, was a specialist in. Uh, I was the BIM specialist in in Bjarke Ingels group, which you know oh. obviously he gave us a, a lot of interesting input in, in, into that like whole uh, like a big office using BIM using uh, Grasshopper. So. He would tell us more or less the workflow of uh, using uh, like normal, you know, sketches, Rhino for for the for the concept part of, of, a, of an architectural idea, and then he would just try to coordinate all the teams into a BIM, like a, a, the the BIM workflow, the BIM, um, you know, model, the BIM modeling part, and then from that from there they would go on to Enscape or to any rendering program, to to you know put put out the final product. But it was super interesting, like how like the different programs that were involved in, in depending on the stages and also depending on the creativity of like well, not creativity but like the the limits of the project for, for that sometimes for example grasshopper could only achieve or rhino could only achieve and maybe uh, Revit couldn't but um it, it was super interesting and, and i think uh, it's interesting to know um like in, like in, in the case for archicad versus versus revit it, it also is very dependent on the like a uh, operating system, I think the operating system, because a lot of people are Maybe. based are using ArchiCAD only because they can, that's the only option they have. Yeah. If they're using Mac, you know, Revit doesn't have, I think, a lot of options to to go into Mac. Like for now, I think at least, and uh, the ones that are using, uh, you know, PC or or Windows, it, it's just uh, they're basically def defaulting onto onto Revit the majority of the time. But I think the much like a lot of them also choose ArchiCAD because of, of the Mac software. What, what do you what do you think, uh, Milos? Yeah, well, uh, it, it could be due to that. I, I know people who, who try to use uh, Revit on, uh, on on Apple computers and it's or Macintosh and it's difficult. Uh, and, and also, uh, at the end of the day, I think it's mostly like the infrastructure that you have uh, when you create a project either in Revit or ArchiCAD. Uh, just the, the power of what you have created really depends on like the next guy in the in the process. So if you can send that Revit project to your structural guy that does structural calculations or, uh, or the company that does whatever, uh, then uh, well, you have that synergy. We are all working in the same software. So if all of the construction companies are working in ArchiCAD, definitely that's, that's something that you should go for because that's like the next step in the, in the process. Uh, and obviously the, the operating system makes a, makes a large difference. 
Well, all right. Uh, we covered a lot, right? Yeah, then, I, I think it would be super interesting now to talk about like the whole business side because of like a lot of people. First of all, just list, just uh, acknowledging the comments. A lot of people are uh, saying that you have a, a really nice mug, uh, the King, <laughs> King of the North mug. Oh yeah, it's the uh, this is a oh, okay. Uh, this Very, is my friend got me. It's the King of the North uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, Mark. Very appropriate, very appropriate for your like your yeah. whole character, like um, <laughs> Milos, King of the North. But super, no, super interesting, super interesting. And um, but I think I I would love to know for personally, like uh, Balkan architect, like the whole brand, like you as an architect. Uh, just describe us a little bit of your life. Like, what year did you graduate? Uh, how many years did you work for an office? And then did you go into the YouTube channel full time? Why did you create the YouTube channel and like what are you doing right now? Like, just tell us that whole whole story that we're just super interested okay. in knowing. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. The the, the history of the Balkan architecture. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm curious to know that too. Yeah, yeah. I so I started the channel. I think uh, I said the second year of my architecture school. Uh, I I was looking for part time uh, jobs which I can do like as a as an architecture student. And something that they saw a lot of people are doing is just teaching uh, other students software. And I was passionate about software, so I decided to make like an AutoCAD channel. And it was like a local Serbian, because I'm from Serbia, and it was a local AutoCAD channel. And uh, I created a series of tutorials, and that's when I really first time realized how difficult that is. Uh, and it took me probably the whole summer, uh, like uh, vacation, <laughs> the vacation time that they had to create this uh, channel and this content. And uh, my goal was to kind of then transition into uh, private tutoring, and that failed <laughs> miserably. Uh, it, the, the channel still gets a lot of views. I think it has like the most viewed, uh, sir, uh, most viewed uh, how to get tutorials in Serbian. Uh, but still, wow. it's 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 nothing that, that would, I can <laughs> use <laughs> uh, and which I can transfer into like a job. So uh, then I kind of got demoralized when it comes to that, and uh, I was learning about Revit at the same time. And uh, just I figured out the first video that I ever uh, uploaded was about uh, how you can create a truss and then how you can cope those uh, beams in a truss so it looks nice because when you do it out of the box it looks terrible uh, so i figured that out and i was really excited about that and i didn't see anybody else sharing that and because i already kind of had that little history with making tutorials i thought well why not create like an uh, english tutorial on that and my accent was terrible back then, so I faked a Russian accent because for some reason <laughs> I thought that would sound better than my broken English. And yeah, that, that was kind of the, the first video. And it got, I think it, it got, that, that one video on, on trusses got the same amount of views that, uh, that my AutoCAD channel was getting. So that one video was getting as many views as like a channel with 30, 40 videos. So I was like, okay, there's there's something there, and uh, I kind of started uh, creating some uh, some tutorials every now and then. I think uh, I was doing like once a month. I would get uh, excited about it, and then I would make two videos and upload them, just one after the other, and then I would stop for the next month. And uh, the, so on the third year of my uh, school, that was like the the last year of my bachelor's degree. I started working for uh, for a company, architecture company, uh, part-time. I was working there for 20 hours a week, plus my school, plus uh, working on my uh, architecture channel. And th that's that's pretty much the only experience I have working in, a, in an architectural office. I did enjoy it, some aspects of it. I really didn't like other aspects of working for, uh, for a company. I was the only rabbit guy there so it was kind of teaching everybody else about Lair. I, I did have that like BIM manager position I guess you can say at that company and yeah so I worked there for like three months and uh, slowly I, I realized that that really wasn't for me the the company wasn't really organized that well so that was a little bit annoying it, it was a new company and plus it was like an unpaid internship so I decided that that wasn't <laughs> worth my time. And then 
And at that moment, my channel got to like a thousand subscribers or somewhere like that. And uh, I was doing research on what do YouTubers do to kind of you know, make their channels better and attract more viewers. And one of the things that was really kind of excited, exciting back then, I think it was 2018 or yeah, I think it was 2018. And back then daily uploads were like the, the main thing on YouTube. That's when we had all of these vlogging channels uh, yeah. just uploading uh, like videos every day. And so I, I thought, well, I, I can do that, why not? <laughs> so uh, that's when I started like uh, really getting serious about uh, both learning Revit and uh, teaching Revit. And I, I think that probably inspired me most when it comes to learning Revit, because for a lot of things, I just see something and I thought, and I think to myself like, okay, that could probably be done in Revit. Okay, how do I do that? And then when I figure that out, I make a video. So a lot of my Revit knowledge is just me learning how to do something so I can teach that. And I think it's a really powerful way of, uh, of learning a topic because when you have to teach something, you have to learn it on such a higher level than just learning it from your, for yourself for a certain project. And even to this day, I, I have situations where I want to do something in Revit and then I go back to my whole tutorials because I forgot how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and, and just revisit that. Uh, and I, I graduated, uh, I, I guess, two years ago. Yeah, I think I graduated two years ago. And uh, uh, my channel grew to a certain point and uh, I, I started my Patreon page and my website where I, I sell my courses. So it got to a point where I can do that full time. And uh, I just didn't want to start working for a, for a different company. And especially here, I, I know a situation is tough for architects pretty much everywhere in the world. Uh, and it's a, it's a tragically or undervalued profession. Uh, but especially here in Serbia, it's like you can probably get a higher salary working in like a shop stacking shelves than uh, with no experience, no, nothing else, than as a kind of a starting architect out of uh, out of college with a master's degree. So I, I didn't want that, <laughs> any of that. So that's why I've uh, kind of concentrated on building this brand and uh, building uh, building content, videos, courses, uh, templates, and, and so on. And, uh, and wow. uh, that's where I am now. Yeah. But, but one thing that I, like, I got really uh, curious to hear, is the Russian video still available? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. <laughs> uh, even like the, the first few videos. Yeah, I, I do have like this. Uh, I got to really check it out. I got to yeah, check yeah, yeah. it out. But, but that's an interesting story. I mean, yeah. I, and and please don't come back to your regular office because you help so many people and uh, it's, it will be like you do a favor to all of us to, to, because i think the best the best thing that you said is that you you learn because you need it and then you pass on the knowledge it's not about like just making videos for making videos or teaching for teaching yeah. it's just it's just putting the knowledge that you applied in in, in practice to uh, through youtube so that you you kind of repractice your knowledge your learning you get really proficient proficiency at that, and then you you teach someone else. That's yeah. And, and, and when, as I was uh, making my first videos, my kind of I, I was more showing off than I was uh, teaching. I guess that's <laughs> that, that's how now I feel about it. When I when I see those videos, they were like, yeah, you can do this in Revit. And uh, now, uh, as as I make more and more videos, like the teaching side, and especially online teaching, uh, uh, and especially through free platforms such as YouTube, it's it's really a different game than what you see in universities. And I think that uh, when when you're going to either to a university or to a private course, uh, the, the 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 teacher or the instructor has kind of a monopoly on your attention. And when you're on YouTube, uh, you're competing with like cat videos and, and accident <laughs> compilations. So your content has to be, uh, not, not only do you have to share a lot of knowledge. Keep people's attention because you know that they're just on the side of your video, there's like a, like a cat video that looks appealing to, to people so you want to kind of keep that attention and that's that's 
that's what's interesting to me because teaching in that format where you're uh, both a teacher and an entertainer entertainer in in a certain way yeah yeah, yeah I, it's just, I think we me and steven also struggle with that i think anyone that that really teaches architecture stuff uh, on youtube struggles with that and so and then we get comments like man this is too fast yeah it is too fast but if we we go slowly you guys will jump out of the no video so yeah. yeah so we we're we're in the constant battle that we we got to make our content attractive to bring more guys more people to watching our videos but then we also want to teach so teach uh, valuable stuff in the video so it's it's a struggle uh, constant battle i guess yeah yeah and, and uh, that's why i like the, the 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 format of having those fun videos on youtube and then you have courses for people that really want to go slowly step by step they can purchase the course and there you kind of set aside aside a few hours just for learning but when it comes to the the, the youtube platform it's even the even the the topics that you choose to to teach have to be kind of specialized and adapted to the youtube platform because if you upload something that's going to affect a, a few people or even if it's yes. something that's, uh, that affects a lot of people but it's not fun it's not something that you would click on uh, it's it's not going to do very well so uh, i i get negative comments all the time either about going too fast or sticking to just kind of uh, basic topics and not going in depth into <laughs> some, some more i guess information side of BIM, but it's not something that people want to click on, on on YouTube, unfortunately. But yeah, that's that's just the nature of the platform. But, but cool, because you're like at the end, we're trying to to synthesize uh, like a, a big problem or a problem that maybe if you were in university, if you're in a course, it, it would take uh, hours, like a whole class to, to teach. And mm -hmm. you're trying to synthesize it into in 10 minutes. So that's what I think is, is a challenge in itself. And I'm curious, I'm curious to know, because obviously you started with an Auto AutoCAD channel and then jumped on to Revit. But if you were to have the, the possibility to start another channel with all of the, <laughs> the YouTube knowledge that you have today, and obviously, you know, you know the, the the business side of it. Like, what channel would you start? Would you start like the same Revit channel, or would you go maybe into another architecture field, or maybe just uh, I don't know, uh, a channel that has nothing to do about architecture? Well, what, what yeah, like a Game of Thrones Exploring. channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I'm I'm actually now I'm kind of exploring. Uh, I would like to kind of branch out a little bit uh, and. Uh, I think that the, starting with the Revit channel was uh, really good, uh, mostly because at the time when I started out, there really was, uh, wasn't any like Revit channel. I, I think there were like a couple of uh, decent channels, but they weren't uploading regularly. And then on the uh, on the other hand, nobody really uh, used like the YouTuber approach to Revit tutorials. It was just kind of. Uh, what they do is, uh, and I, I think you, you do, do that as well, is you have that little uh, YouTuber flair for uh, the content that you create. It has to be be a little bit fun, a little quicker, a little more interesting, engaging. And I, I think I was the first guy that did that with Revit. And because Revit grew over time, and I, my channel grew with that. So I, I think it was a good decision. Now, now that you think about it, I think Revit yeah. was probably I, I was probably at the right the place at the right time just by accident but yeah i'm, I'm happy about it and now i'm thinking about uh, again branching out perhaps into either autocad or and or uh, photoshop but uh, concentrating on like one or having one channel which only concentrates on software for architects because there are there are thousands of photoshop uh, channels out there but there's only a few that show for uh, how to apply that in architecture. And the uh, same thing goes with AutoCAD. There, there are many channels uh, for AutoCAD, but they usually show many different things. And I, I, I like how you can kind of concentrate the channel to be uh, architecture niche plus one software, and then you combine that into one thing. That, that I think it's powerful. And it's not only for for our architects and for software, I think it's for anything else. When it comes to creating a YouTube channel, just 
kind of trying to co combine two niches into one uh, that, that that's really powerful and there's going to be audience for for everybody out, out there I think it's just uh, more people get access to internet and YouTube uh, and uh, each day so I think it's uh, it, it's it's possible for for combining these topics you can always get a large audience awesome yeah. pretty excited to see what your channel turns into uh, and were you were you thinking about going with the same channel or, or uh, no I, I will definitely divide that I, I think with YouTube you want to keep uh, uh, you, you don't want to give your audience something that they're not looking for uh, if I were to start uploading out to get videos nobody would watch them for example one I, I think it's a it's, a, it's an interesting kind of effect uh, I did upload in the in the beginning I had like four out to get videos because I thought well, if it's getting this many views with Revit and nobody knows about Revit, how, how many views it will get without the get? And that those four videos were terrible uh, at first. And yeah. now, uh, like two of them are in my main top 10 videos all time. So yeah. I, I think your subscribers don't appreciate it when you give completely different content to what they kind of subscribe to. So uh, for, for that, I would do like a separate channel, but there's definitely people that want to learn about AutoCAD still, even though we, we do consider it as the old software. Uh, I, I think it's still pretty powerful. And uh, even in like a hobbyist way, I think more people coming to AutoCAD uh, these days are, they, they, they don't have to be uh, architects per se, they can be just well, looking to kind of do, do some uh, technical drawings of their own or something like that. Yeah, and, and one more thing that I would like to share is yeah, that when I started my channel, uh, it wasn't, uh, my idea wasn't to go with Revit only. I wanted to do kind of broader architectural topics. I have like a video on the star architects uh, and a video on artificial intelligence and architecture. And I, I was super excited about these. I thought like everybody would like to <laughs> know about this and those videos did terrible. So I realized that I, for this channel, at least they do have to stick with Revit only to kind of keep that audience and keep uh, growing it. Well, and now at least you, you've built the business and then the maybe the main channel can support the other channels as they grow and then they can all move forward. like thinking from a from a business side maybe yeah yeah well that's what i'm thinking about but on the other hand there is so much work involved in this <laughs> yeah. uh, i like to be uh, optimistic uh, about uh, kind of expanding but it's also really a lot of work just to kind of go and <laughs> start a new channel completely kind of out of zero but but I love that you're like super like into your community to what they like. You're like, all right, so they didn't like this video. Let's turn over to this one. Like uh, you you're analyzing constantly. But I think that you know eventually, I don't know, by Milos in five years and in ten years, you're eventually going to also want to do your stuff. Maybe if you want to do like a, a you know a channel on Starkitects, a channel on architects in, in in Serbia or architects with beards, whatever. You're gonna to want to do these kind of stuff, so I think it's it's, it's super interesting that people get to know you, and then they just want to see Milos for whatever he does, even if it's a yeah. AutoCAD, Revit, or you know whatever. So what what are you planning to do on in like the next five years, ten years, like grow that Balkan brand, or are you trying to maybe do stuff outside of YouTube? Well, how how do you how do you see yourself? Yeah, well, uh, uh, when it comes to the Balkan architect brand, I I, I want to continue growing that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm optimistic when I think about uh, expanding into different software, and those would be kind of separate channels. Uh, so that, that that's one of the things that I'm uh, looking into. And I also I'm really passionate about uh, as we talked about these uh, YouTube-based businesses and generally online businesses when it comes to teaching. And that's something that I would like to somehow turn into something else. I, I don't know. Uh, currently, I'm thinking about creating like a, a local channel or a Serbian channel where I would talk about some of those topics because uh, uh, here uh, in in Serbia there is a lot of online businesses that uh, originate in Serbia but are kind of worldwide uh, businesses, uh, but people don't know about that. So I was thinking about kind of trying to 
teach about teaching online and about showing off your work online and how you can use that. It, it doesn't have to be like a, a like a business side of things. It doesn't have to generate income, but still, I think an architect with a good Instagram page is definitely going to be more employable than an architect without a good Instagram page. If you if, if we say yeah. they're completely same skills and same experience. I think it's good to share your knowledge no matter what you do, or not only knowledge, just what you did. Uh, just share it online. Is going to be Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, whatever works for you. Uh, so I, I would like to kind of introduce that more locally here because I, I think there is a large audience for that, but nobody's talking about it. Well, at least that's my opinion. I, I also yeah. thought people might want to see videos on Star Architects, but yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> And yeah, but digital marketing is something that I think every every job, every profession uh, has to take advantage of. Otherwise, I, it may be left out of out of the the clients and out of the market. All right, yeah. um, this this has been fun, uh, great conversation. Like, should we Super should we jump to to the chat questions? I know that people are are dropping a, a thousand questions there, and we might not be able to answer all of them. But let's. Let's try to find some. Let me see. For sure, you. ask your questions, people. Like, what questions do you have for for Balkan? Uh, what would you like to know about him? About um, his um, his life? His uh, you know his views on Revit, Archicad. Um, I try to display the chat overlay. I think it didn't work out. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the spot a questions. Let me let me find something here. Um, Well, we There's had a, a thousand questions before, and now <laughs> people are just chatting on the, on the, on the. <laughs> but that's that's how it's supposed to be. I, I saw that many, uh, the audience was helping each other. Like people were asking questions, and the other ones were, were answering. Then that's pretty. They're, cool. they're, they're also asking where you're from, Milo. Like, where are you from? Yeah, I'm I'm from Serbia, uh, and Serbia is uh, on the Balkans, so that's why we have the name Balkan architect. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a country, Eastern, Eastern European country. Yeah, that's how the the channel got the, got the name. Cool, and, and like while while uh, Oliver searches for for some questions, like for everyone that is watching, uh, you know, right now or or in the future, uh, Balkan apart from his YouTube channel or Milos apart from his YouTube channel, also has a ton of courses, a ton of Patreon content. That that you want to check out if you want to go very deep into certain fields. I know I don't know if you can comment uh, a little bit out about uh, your courses. What courses do you have on right now? What newer courses do you have on right now? And like, what is the structure of, of, of most of these courses? Uh, yeah. So uh, first, thank you for recommending it to the to the audience. Yeah, I, I have a I have both a Patreon page and then also a, a website. Now I'm trying to transition mostly to, to my website because the, the platform is much superior to, uh, to, to, to Patreon, which is more for kind of sharing images, things like that, rather than sharing courses. Uh, but I, I specialize in making the, uh, Revit courses where my idea is to get you to start working on your own projects as soon as possible. That's the kind of the, the, the whole approach. And uh, I try to do that, for example, for I, I have like a whole almost 20 hour beginner to intermediate level course. And there I, the, even though the course sounds like horrible, it's 20 hours, nobody wants to sit through that. The idea is to kind of go in, incrementally. So I start off with just a small project and then we completely finish that project. So if you want to play around yourself with something like that, like a smaller project, you can already get started. And then we have a more complicated project, and then we have a project on uh, on the families and components, and then a project on, on the massing environment. And then after all of that, the, I have like separated uh, chapters for each uh, specific, I guess, set of commands. So if you want to do something really specialized, it's always there. But the general idea and what I believe in is you're going to learn Revit uh, as long as you get started working on your own project because that's going to force you to find solutions on your own. And that's why I like to have that structure where I kind of force people to start, or, or at least give them the opportunity to start working. Yeah. Even though you've just watched four hours of a course, you can already work on your own projects. You don't have to finish everything. And then also, of course, I do some of the, like more specialized 
topics like I have a course on groups or on uh, um, I don't know plumbing, uh, site uh, site design, uh, the, the, wow. the the massive environment, the the the, the family the design, and so on. Yeah, so I, I try to do all of them. I, I'm coming out with like a big intermediate to advanced level course soon, uh, but I, I just need a little more time on that. <laughs> that will be coming wow. soon. So you, you covered it all then, most of, most of the things. Awesome. Well, yeah. we've got a question here from, uh, let me put it on, on the screen. Uh, from Renato, uh, hello, thank you for your talk. Imagine you're the first Revit guy in the firm. What would you do in the first month? Should you should you be making a good template? What's the best way to start? Like how how would you start at a firm that doesn't really uh, use Revit, but then it's willing to to uh, implement come, yeah implement this work into the workflow? Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah, that, that's a really good. Yeah, that's plan. a really good question. Yeah, yeah I, I, as you mentioned, I worked in a company for three months, and that's exactly my my role there. I was like the only Revit guy, and uh, I did make a lot of mistakes, obviously. Uh, but something that I would say is you should probably start thinking about the workflow. I think you've mentioned like the previous interview that you had uh, where the guest was talking about uh, the, the workflow in the BIM architects and how that's important for them. I think uh, workflow uh, as far as BIM is concerned is really crucial. And if you want to introduce Revit or BIM to a company, you should really think about the, the workflow. So uh, try to look at the project, how it starts, uh, then how it progresses, and uh, what's the end product? What do you need to what do you need to produce at the end? And what can your kind of, whoever does the, the construction, what what can they use? What information they can use? And then try to develop like a process of how your company would approach pro projects. Uh, what would you start with? What would be kind of the, some of the main goals? What information must be included in the projects? What information is not necessary? So maybe that's something that you can skip, save some time, and just develop that whole workflow and try to teach your uh, teach the other employees how to implement that workflow uh, when they're working on projects. Probably start off with a smaller project and then build it from there. And after you have like a workflow that works, uh, then I guess, yeah, making a good template is, is always uh, a good idea. And again, try to make it uh, according to your workflow. But th that's why I think that like the, the workflow is where you start and then you build all of the, 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 the content from there. Perfectly said. I think that's a, that's a easy, not a w easy way, but that's a, uh, well thought out way to follow. Uh, let me get yeah. on, uh, another question. Yeah, with yeah. Revit, I think everything is possible. It's just important to figure out what you need, what yeah. you need it, and then go from there. Yeah. And I have a question, uh, Milos. It's, it's, like, it's, it's incredible the amount of work you do. Yeah. Do you do all this by yourself? Like all of the courses, the videos, the Patreon content, is this all done by you? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I, I produce all the, all the content, all the, the courses. Uh, starting from last year, I, uh, I got a friend which works for me now, kind of as a freelancer uh, with, and helps with editing. Uh, and I, I, I'm kind of trying to find somebody locally to help me out uh, further with Revit, especially if I want to start more channels, it's good to have somebody else apart from a good editor. But it's a problem kind of combining the, the, the knowledge that you need for running or helping out with a channel like I, I have and like you guys have. It's, it's really difficult to find somebody that's good with architecture and the video editing and, and Photoshop and online marketing and so on. So it's, it's, it's really something that where you have to kind of set aside a lot of time to train somebody and yeah so that's that's what, what they want to do in the future but for now it's just me plus i have some help with editing that's a big struggle of ours too yeah. uh we we i think i've opened steven also did open positions and then they're amazing architects out there uh, we received a lot of good portfolios but then when it comes to being a content creator uh it's really hard it's but it, it's expected right i mean you go into yeah. university to be an architect and then being on youtube creating content is is a different path that it's not so so common. 
Yeah, it requires a different skill set, like yeah. editing videos, yeah. knowing when to do a jump cut, whatever. I mean, these are things that we're trying to learn on the way, on the path. And I, I saw a person that was asking that if Oliver and me are going to start Oops. doing our um, Revit tutorials. And I think, like, for like, in just in, I think in my case, and I think in Oliver's case as well, we're trying to teach from the, the, the things that we know from the, 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 the spaces that we feel most comfortable in. And I definitely not like, comparing <laughs> myself, myself to you. I definitely do not feel at, at all comfortable teaching anything in Revit because, or in any given program, because I know Revit. I mean, I mean, I know how to create a project, but not to that specific level. So I would love to, maybe if we could do collaborations on channels, but uh, for now, I think I would super recommend for you go for you guys to go to Balkan's Architect, Balkan, uh, uh, Architects YouTube channel and um, learn everything you want to know from Revit over there because uh, obviously. You yeah, really as Mila said, you. like teaching is it's just another level. Like you, you really got to dominate the program. And yeah. I think we I've seen some comments saying that like uh, Mila's is more focused on Revit and, and us like SketchUp, Photoshop. Uh, I think our channel is a little bit different in a way, in a sense that we were trying to focus on the representation and visualization, not so much about the software. So we might migrate to to other softwares just to, to use its cap capabilities to achieve us something like After Effects that we, we we once did, like Premiere Pro. But yeah, Revit, focus on Revit. I think Balkan can answer all of your questions. So yeah, and I'm pretty sure all of all of the people watching here are already subscribed to you because. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really like how, I guess here in this interview, we can see like a couple of different approaches where to teaching. Uh, I have the approach where I, <clears throat> I just teach the, the software and it's just one software. So I show you endless capabilities on that. And on the other hand, we, we have your channels where you use multiple softwares and you concentrate on the end result. And correct me if I'm wrong uh, sure. in this, but you, you, you kind of find something that you like, that you want to represent, and then you figure out a way to do it using uh, either one or two softwares or maybe even yeah. more. Uh, but you concentrate more on the end result, and I concentrate more on the tools, and the, the, that would be kind of the the difference yeah, with the approach. But in in the end, people want to want to see both. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's all about learning and getting the knowledge. I think perfectly yeah. said. Uh, we've got a question here. Um, no, it, it was not that. But uh, let's let's read this one. <laughs> Good. Uh, no, no, not this one. Here, this is the one. Um, Will architects who, who are still against modern workflows like BIM stand a chance in the future? I think we've talked a little bit about that, but oh, what's yeah. your like short answer on this? What would you yeah, say? Yeah. Well, I think it's. Uh, I think people uh, usually believe that like unless you know BIM, you're never going to get a job in the future. Uh, there, there is a little bit of that, uh, especially on my channel and in the comments and so on. Uh, but I think it, it, if you're a young architect, if you're just starting out, I think it's really important to, to, to concentrate on software as well, because until you get your first job, there is, uh, there is not much else that you can learn. Uh, you cannot learn about uh, a specific topic in architecture unless you work on the job. In software, you can learn without, uh, without the job. So I think it's a, it's a good place to start for students. Uh, but for some senior architects or somebody that that's already very good at a certain field uh, when it comes to architecture or uh, a certain type of design, uh, I think it's always going to to be important to just have that knowledge, and you can always find somebody who can well draw that and and and, and turn that into a BIM model. But uh, there, there's a difference between kind of architectural knowledge. Uh, or it's kind of specific knowledge and then uh, just knowing Revit or knowing software in general. It's ideal to know both, but if you just con concentrate on the one, it's I, I wouldn't say that that's bad at all. Pretty good. I like it. Well, um, I think, I think, I mean, we could stay for hours here answering questions and talking about BIM, but uh, we, I don't want to like have all of your time, Balkan. I know you have plenty of things to do. So uh, I think we're going to wrap this this up right now. Guys, uh, if you have further questions, we, we can do this as a part two over Steven's channel. If uh, sure. Milos is interested in being there again, uh, it would be amazing. 
and we want to bring other 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 guests so if you have suggestions drop them in the comments uh, after this video is published or reach us on instagram oh and i noticed that your uh, email was wrong on the names and people were commenting that so i think it's balan architect Oh, okay. of Balkan, yeah so uh where, where people can can find you uh should they go to instagram should they reach you to the email that you placed there but the correct one or should, should they yeah. just go to patreon youtube uh yeah they can they, uh, usually I, I try to answer most emails uh, uh when it comes to facebook and uh, instagram i i just cannot <laughs> same thing goes with uh, youtube comments i i try to answer uh when i get like a quick question where i can give you like a definite quick answer uh, but yeah, mostly email and the, the rest is really difficult to ca capture. And of course, for my Patreon members, I, I answer everybody. Uh, but I, I, I had to make that like differentiation from uh, members on my website or on my Patreon and uh, just on social media in general, because I get way too many comments and I, I would have to spend whole day just answering <laughs> questions. So in short, just email me. I think that's probably the idea, the, the best way to reach it at this point. All right. And well, and if you don't know his channel, check his channel, check his Patreon. A lot of good content there as well. Yeah, and, and yeah, thank well, you so much for, for this invitation and for, for the talk. It was really fun for me. Uh, this is my first like live appearance. So uh, it, it was really fun. Uh, and yeah, and th thank you so much. And I really enjoyed your content. Uh, of course, even before this, uh, I, I always found something interesting on both of your channels, which I can implement in my workflow. So thank you for that. No, no, no. Thank you, Milos, because I think we are all very grateful for, for, for what you do every day, like for, for all the content that you upload, for your consistency. And I think... Uh, I think we're just um, we're just amazed at how much you work mm -hmm. and uh, like, like someone in the comments said, thank you, King of the North. So it's just <laughs> that <passion. laughs> thank you. No, seriously, thank you so much. And uh, I love that we're creating these uh, these spaces where people can uh, get to know kind of like their teachers or whatever, like the people that uh, we're, we're trying to, to educate the, the community that we're trying to create. And of course, we would love to have many, much more uh, uh, people that are similar, people that are also trying to bring, uh, you know, novelty inside of the architectural educational world or whatever. So, so thank you, seriously, thank you for being here. And of course, if if any if the people want a part two, we can give them a part two because <laughs> there are there are a lot of questions, a lot of things that maybe we would need to be much more specific about. But uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time, and thank you also Oliver for for the space. Yeah, thank you all. And for the audience, uh, make sure to reach us at Learn Upstairs and let's show you better on Instagram so that we can uh, gather the questions, uh, get suggestions. And as we said, we're doing this as a regular thing. So probably next week, we're going to try to bring other other guys. We're just waiting on their uh, scheduling and acceptance. And so, yeah, thank you again. And I'll, we'll see you on the next one.